so just real quick, I know a lot of people are asking this question. Um, others are not asking it, but the number of people who are asking it makes me think maybe you have this question, but you're just not asking it. So this is C. This is C. This is the one with the root 3 in it. Okay. So just have a look. I've already done most of the work for you, but I want to point out some things and then do the part that I haven't done. So here's my equation. Here's where I began. Right. You can see I've got my negative 2 and my 1 hiding in here, but they're all opposite, right? Because it's x take away negative 2, it's y take away positive 1. So that's where you get that. On the right hand side here, why is this 3 and not 9? Right, so I, I look at this and you will get often lots of nice equations where you'll get like square numbers over here. You're like, oh, these are all really lovely, right? You're, you'll get used to um, seeing numbers that you expect to be squares. But they don't have to be. We might give you any number, and the radius will be the square root of that guy, right? which in this case they want to be root 3. Okay? Now I've gone ahead and drawn it, but what you might notice is, not only do I have my center, I know it's not the most circular circle, so run with me. What you've noticed is, I couldn't draw this without reaching for my calculator and working out root 3. Okay? Now I happen to actually know roughly what root 3 is, but that's just because I've done this hundreds of times. But you don't have to, because your calculator will give it to you to enough precision that you can put this on the graph. Right? Now I know, for example, it's less than 2. It's close to 2, but it's less than 2. So you can see, for example, here, right? this is negative 1. That's where I'm lined up with. right? So when I go down, when the radius goes down, it's going to go 1.73 units down. So there it's gone 1 unit. If I went down to here, I would have gone two units. That's too far. I'm not meant to go that far. I'm only meant to go 1.73 units. So you can see that's why I'm a little bit shy of it. Same deal up here. I'm a bit below. You know, I can't go two units. I've got to stay a little bit behind there. So that's how I've drawn this. And I've done the same thing here. That distance is two. So this distance in here is that 1.73, roughly. Okay. Now, from here I then have to think about domain and range. And this becomes a little bit awkward because I have these square roots. So let's think about domain. Right? My x values, what is the leftmost x value I can get? Hmm. Now, think about this, right? Where's the center? It's here, negative 2. Here's the leftmost value. How far did I go to the left? Minus one, minus yeah, I, I did this. That's how far I went to the left, right? So I started at negative 2, and then I went a further root 3 units to the left. So I subtract root 3. Do you see that? So I started at negative 2, and then I went this way, root 3 units. That's my leftmost point. Okay. What about my rightmost point? Uh, negative 2 plus. Yeah, I start from the center again. But then instead of going to the left, I'm going to the right, the same distance, root 3. Okay? So to the right means that guy. And as we already established before, you can actually get to these endpoints, hence the square brackets. Same deal with range, square bracket. When I think vertically, where am I, where's my starting point? What value am I starting at for the center? It's, it's 1, right? There it is. Right? When I think about from 1 downwards, it's 1, and then I take away the radius. 1, take away the root 3. That will send me down to the bottom most point. And then I can go up to 1 plus root 3. Okay? Now I know that looks a bit awful and gross. Okay? Because they're absurd, so they don't simplify nicely. But can you see this just comes out of what a circle is? In fact, these 1, 2, 3, 4 points, they were the kind of anchor points that you drew when you were making sure your circle was in the right spots. Okay? I want you to have a look at this equation over here on the right hand side with me. Okay? Now this equation presents two kind of huh moments, right? Here's the first weird moment, right? When you have a look at the right hand side, it equals zero. Now you're like, hold on a second. The right hand side is supposed to be like my radius, right? What kind of circle is this? Okay, that's the first weird thing. The second weird thing is um, you can see every equation you've been dealing with so far, it's in this nice factorized form, right? You're like, oh, I can look at this. And immediately I can just read off. Center is at negative 2 and 1. Okay? But this is not. This is not neatly factorized. And it turns out those two weirdnesses, if that's a word, those two weird aspects of this, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Because in factorizing this left-hand side, which you're going to help me do in a second, we will actually fix up and find out what the radius is. So let's have a think about this. 
At the moment, if I want to turn this into a nice, neat, factorized thing, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and gather all of the x's together because they're eventually going to be together like this in a factorized thing. So I'm going to write down, and don't worry about writing this down. I promise you'll have the opportunity in a minute. I'm going to write all the x terms together. Then there's this y squared, and he's over here. Okay. Now, what you're going to end up with is something squared, right? A nice, neat, perfect square. Is there some technique we have access to that allows us to factorize things that allows them to become a nice, perfect square? We will graph this eventually. But before I got to know, I've got to, I've got to think about a technique that we've learned before, more in the context of parabolas and quadratics, right? What do we do? Okay, so we can add and subtract something that will allow this thing to become a square, right? We call this because what we're going to, we're like missing a thing that will make this a square. Remember, we call this completing the square, right? What am I going to add? Yeah, look at this number, right? I'm going to halve it and then square it. Halve it, square it. So when you halve this, you get? Five. And then you square it, you get? 25. OK. So I'm adding 25 in here. But this is an equation, right? You can't just add something because you want to. Everything must maintain balance. So if I added 25 here, since I've got an equation, I'm going to add 25 to the other side. Is that OK? All right. Now, see this guy here? This is now a nice, neat square. right? This is x plus 5 all squared. Right? And this guy here, I know this is going to sound a bit, look a bit silly, but I'm going to write it as y minus 0 squared. Because y is y minus 0, right? Why do you think I wrote it in that form? Um, What's useful like, about it? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get it looking like this, right? So now off of this, I can read off the center and the radius. What are the, what's the x coordinate of the center? Negative 5. What's the y coordinate? 0. Minus zero. zero. And then the radius will equal to five. the square root of this guy is 5, right? Nailed it. So that completing the square thing is not just useful for solving quadratic equations. It also helps us untangle this equation. Okay? Can I give you a minute to get that down? And then we'll have a look at B together, which is slightly more complicated. But I promise you'll still be able to do it. Give you a bit of time to catch up. Okay? This looks a little more complicated. It's only a little more complicated. This time, I'm going to have you do it with me. And I'm going to be a little more structured and tell you exactly what I'm doing. Okay? So see this thing here? It's just a garbled, expanded mess. It came from here, and someone expanded it. It's like, why, why did you do that, right? So I'm going to undo that. Um, the, this step that I'm about to do, I call it kind of prepare for surgery, right? I'm not ready to complete the square yet. I've got to arrange this nicely so it's easier for me to see what I should do, right? So here's the first step, and you can do it along with me, right? See these x terms here? I'm going to gather them. I'm also going to gather these y terms here. I'm going to gather them together. Yeah, and then see this guy, right? This constant term, in the equation for a circle, the constant ends up on the right-hand side. It helps me work out my radius, right? So I'm going to gather my x's, I'm going to gather my y's, and then I'm going to kick this guy over here. I'm going to add it to both sides, right? So let's do this step. I'm not actually doing any like fancy rearrangement. I'm just saying here are the x's, right? I'm even going to like leave myself a gap because I know I'm about to add something, right? Here are my y's. Right, like so, x is there, y is there, and then the constants all belong on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 11 to both sides. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. Now in this case you can see I have not one, but two squares to complete. And that's fine, you could do both of them in one here. What number do I add to this part here to complete the x square? So I'm going to halve this, and then square it. Halving it gives me negative 4. Squaring it gives me 16. 16. As soon as you add 16 here, immediately add 16 to the other side. Don't like wait to the end. You added 16 here, do it at the same time. Okay, it's still balanced. And then, nine. and then this guy here, you halve this gives you 3. Squaring it gives you 9. So as soon as you add 9 here, you should also add 9 here. Everything is balanced. Okay? And if you like, I mean I just kind of like doing this to myself. You're like, there's all the X stuff. And here's all the y stuff. And then I can also collect like terms of value out on the right-hand side. What will the square be? Once it's nice and factorized, x, x minus 4. Yeah. So watch out. Th that sign there, right? It's, in it's not important when you're completing the square, but it is important when you're factorizing. So it's going to be x minus 4. And then what about the, the y part? Y. So, so 
Yeah. Sorry, I'll get to the y in a second. Sorry, you asked why is that minus 4? It comes from that minus sign right there. Yeah. See that? That's got a negative there. And go ahead, expand this. You'll need this minus sign to get the minus 8x. Okay? And then as you guys were just telling me, y plus 3. Um, have you evaluated the right hand side yet? 36. So what's the radius of this? Uh, six. six units. It's the square root of that right hand side. Okay. So even though it looks a bit messy, you're just like, I don't have to complete the square once, I complete the square twice, but it's no, not harder. Just it's an extra thing to do. So I'm going to read off my center is 4 and negative 3, and my radius is 6, as you just told me. Nailed it. Okay.